In this video, we review the OWC Thunderblade Gen 2, but not just one Thunderblade. We go hands-on with an awesome dual Thunderblade RAID 0 setup with our iMac Pro, and the results, as you can probably imagine, are insane. Watch our hands-on video review after a brief message from our sponsor. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Luminar 3, an essential tool for photographers of all skill levels, including photo enthusiasts. Luminar 3 now with libraries features incredible AI capabilities, including accent AI to improve colors, detail, tone, and depth with just a click, things that would normally require dozens of manual adjustments. And there's AI Sky Enhancer. It'll automatically detect and mask the sky for instant enhancement. While content-aware filters like sun rays allows you to place the sun anywhere in a photo. Check the link in the description to download Luminar 3 today and use code 9 to 5 mac for an additional $10 off. Special thanks to Skylum, creator of Luminar 3, for sponsoring 9 to 5 mac on YouTube. How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Jeff Benjamin with 9 to 5 mac Here it is, the OWC Thunderblade Gen 2 comes in its own ballistic carrying case, just in case you want to travel with it and you want to keep it safe. And it makes sense because this Thunderblade, the top of the line version, cost an eye-watering $3,500. So obviously it's not going to be for everyone. The Thunderblade is clearly aimed at creative pros. This is the top of the line, eight terabyte Thunderblade, so tons of storage on deck. But really the most impressive, or at least one of the most impressive things about the Thunderblade is that it's able to have all that storage inside a passively cooled enclosure. We'll talk about that a little bit later. You also have a power cord, a Thunderbolt 3 cable, and a power adapter. So that's everything that comes inside the ballistic carrying case. And although it's possible to use disk utility to configure these drives, I definitely recommend using OWC's self-rate utility. We'll talk more about that as well. Okay, so here's the second OWC Thunderblade. And as you might expect, it's the exact same thing inside. So you have your Thunderblade, your power cable, power adapter, and your Thunderbolt 3 cable inside. So here are two Thunderblades side by side. Thumbs up if you think that Thunderblade sandwich looks appetizing can tell I'm getting hungry already. It's a little too early for that. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about some of the other characteristics of the Thunderblade. For instance, the unit comes with dual Thunderbolt 3 ports that allows you to daisy chain another device to the unit while connected to your Mac. There's also a DC input for power, and you also have an ambient light sensor. We'll talk about that near the end of the video. Now I cracked open one of these Thunderblade units and here's what I saw. So first of all, you'll note the diffusion layer here for the LED indicator lights. We'll talk about that a little bit more. You can also see where that thermal paste sits right flush against the chassis, which is gonna help dissipate heat. So when looking at the SSDs, of course you see that layer of thermal paste on top. There's also paste on the bottom as well. And this makes sense because these things get really hot, these SSDs, and because there's no fan inside, the chassis itself works as a giant heat sink. It's a really impressive design. Even when under load, the chassis never gets hot. And then you also see the row of LEDs which work together with the piece of diffusion to give you a nice looking status indicator. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it all out. So I have my Thunderblade, I have the iMac Pro, this is the base model iMac Pro, so I connect the power and Thunderbolt 3 cable to the Thunderblade. And you can see the low profile design of the Thunderblade makes it easy to slide right under the iMac Pro. Okay, so we have it connected to our Mac. Now it's a matter of configuring the soft raid utility, which comes free with the OWC Thunderblade. And remember, there are four individual SSDs inside this single eight terabyte Thunderblade. So four two terabyte SSDs inside. These can be configured standalone if you wish to do so, or they can be configured in a RAID setup. So here in the utility, if you select new volume, we're gonna create a standalone volume with a single drive. It's gonna optimize for digital video and create. So that creates a single drive utilizing one of the SSDs inside the Thunderblade. So let's test the speed of this thing. And you can see it's 
fast, but not what I would call super impressive, right? Because you're using that one drive. Also note that LED indicator, just one is flashing on the left-hand side to indicate activity on that one drive. So those LEDs are actually broken up to represent activity across all of the drives inside this thing. Okay, so Thunderbolt 3 only provides access to a maximum of four PCIe lanes. So you get one lane per drive inside the OWC Thunderblade. So you see that link width one? So that represents one lane per drive. So to really saturate the amount of available Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth, you're going to want to use all four drives at once, one lane per drive for a total of four PCIe lanes. And it's only by doing that will you be able to use the OWC Thunderblade to its full potential. So we're gonna use all four drives to create a rate zero volume use digital video for optimization, that'll give us just below eight terabytes of total space. So you can see there. And then when we run a speed test, you're gonna see obviously a huge uptick in speed, partly because of the RAID 0 setup, but also because you are using more Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth at the same time. So you can see it's really fast, right? Obviously gonna be way more than you need for 4K workflows and you can see that activity light, all four lights are flashing across the board because we're using all four drives at the same time. So like I said, plenty of bandwidth for 4K workflows, even at 60 frames per second, you're gonna to be totally fine and you could go higher than that. Okay, so the next obvious question is what happens if you use two Thunderblades in a RAID 0 setup? Let's talk about that right now. Okay, so you have four Thunderbolt 3 ports on the iMac Pro. You have receptacle one, two, three, four. The iMac Pro features two Thunderbolt 3 buses with receptacle one and two being on bus zero and three and four being on bus one. To take advantage of the speed of two Thunderblades, you need to connect to two separate buses. So either receptacle one and three or receptacle two and four. Let me illustrate for you. This receptacle one and two, the same bus, that's bad. This receptacle one and four, that's good, two separate buses, or two and four. That's good, two separate buses, but three and four, that's bad, the same bus. And beware not to daisy chain two Thunderblades together because yeah, you're still using just one bus. So if you really want the speed that you get from connecting two Thunderblades, make sure they're connected to a separate Thunderbolt 3 bus. And if you're using a computer that only has one bus, like the MacBook Air for instance, you're not gonna get the full speed that two Thunderblades offer. So you would kind of be wasting your money by doing that. that. That would be a bad idea. Okay, so now we have both Thunderblades connected to our iMac Pro, and as you can see right here, it looks amazing, right? Uh, but let's go ahead and open up Soft RAID so we can get this thing configured and start testing it. Okay, so we have all four SSDs here in Soft RAID, so we're going to create a new volume. Choose Stripe for RAID 0. We'll call it Final Cut Pro 10, and we'll select all eight drives. Select digital video and you can see it's almost 16 terabytes of storage. Click create. So you're gonna have tons of storage there and not just that, tons of fast storage. Okay, so first of all, I wanna show you what the speed test results look like when you're using the same bus, which I told you not to do, uh, but you can see the results aren't that good. In fact, the results are quite similar to the results you'd get when using a single Thunderblade. And if we venture over to system information, you can see why. So let's do that right now. And you can see if we select Thunderbolt, you'll see that both Thunderblades are on the same bus, Thunderbolt bus zero. So there's not enough available bandwidth to take advantage of all that extra speed available thanks to that RAID zero setup. So we're gonna set it the right way this time, two separate buses, you can see right here, one is on bus zero, the other is on bus one, and now let's run a speed test and see what the results look like. I bet they're gonna be a lot better this time. And you can see that they are almost 3,000 megabytes per second write, and well over 3,000 megabytes per second read. So just that little detail makes a huge difference in the performance of two Thunderblades in a RAID zero configuration. The speed is ridiculous. In fact, it's faster than pretty much any external drive setup that I've tested personally, and it also is faster than the internal SSD on the iMac Pro. So here are the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test Result Benchmarks. 
So you can see as far as read performance goes, two Thunder Blades blow the lid off things, but Apple's internal SSD is still pretty fast as well. Now one last detail I wanted to share with you guys is that ambient light sensor that we mentioned at the outset, that's actually a pretty handy little feature. Notice what happens when you cover the ambient light sensor to simulate darkness. You're gonna notice that the LED lights dim, so they're not gonna blind you in a dark setting. So there's that ambient light sensor. Let's go ahead and cover it up. And you see the LED lights dim on the back of the Thunderblade. So a nice feature, definitely. Although I would still prefer to be able to completely disable those LED lights. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a hands-on look at the Thunderblade SSD. A couple of things I love about this thing, the dead silent operation, there's no fans. It's super fast, obviously, and you have a ton of storage at your disposal. Some things I don't like, obviously, most people will say the price, but I just think this thing is not even priced in the realm of your average consumer. Obviously, this is designed specifically with creative pros in mind that have that sort of budget to spend on stuff like this, but it's still crazy pricey, right? And then there's the idea that you really have to use RAID 0 to take full advantage of the speed. And obviously RAID 0 has inherent disadvantages because if a single drive fails, your entire array fails. However, I will say that I've never had that happen with SSDs. And I think the likelihood of that happening is very slim. That said, always have backups for mission critical data. But I just have to say, as a video editor, folks, these things are awesome. Having this much silent, fast storage sitting on your desk, I mean, I don't think there's a way I could justify the price for my particular workflow, but if I could, I probably would because they make life that much easier for a video editor. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments and check for this word from our sponsors. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Luminar 3. In addition to all the cool AI features we discussed, Luminar 3 combines powerful and innovative photo editing with a new library feature, which allows anyone to organize, edit, and manage photos. Download Luminar 3 today and use code 9to5Mac for an additional $10 off. Special thanks to Skylum, creator of Luminar 3, for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.